There's a new military superpower dawning on the European continent, and no, it's not France, Germany, or even Britain. Poland has decided it's done messing around, and it's arming itself to the teeth. But why is Poland apparently preparing itself for World War III? Russia's invasion of Ukraine has served as an alarm bell for a Europe that, for three decades, was content to let the United States do all its military heavy lifting while naturally complaining endlessly about U.S. militarization. However, the explosion of war in its backyard has snapped European powers out of their comfortable post-Cold War victory naps, and suddenly the continent has remembered there is a serious military threat right next door, and America is still an ocean away. Forget the baguettes and berets, it's time to start buying guns again. But Europe can hardly be blamed for dropping the ball on their own defensive spending. After decades of being prepared to wage an apocalyptic battle for global survival, the West breathed a collective sigh of relief, and billions of dollars in military spending was repurposed to civilian projects. Armies were demobilized, budgets were slashed, and a lot of military kit was either thrown into deep storage or donated to developing countries. With the rise of extremism, European militaries focused on waging small regional conflicts with logistics handled almost entirely by the US. The next major war would be one with hugs, or simply not fought at all, as Europe tried to bring Russia into the fold by deepening trade relations with their cranky neighbor. Yet all Europe managed to do was give Russia incredible leverage over them, because Russia wasn't done fighting wars to advance its national agenda. When war broke out in Ukraine, Europe was caught with its pants down, and despite having a combined GDP many times greater than Russia, they cannot outsupply Russia inside Ukraine. Poland was quick to take note, though, and overnight the country went on a dizzying shopping spree for all kinds of new military kit. Poland has good reason to want to buy absolute mountains of new tanks and other gear, and that's not an exaggeration. Had Russia's invasion of Ukraine been planned by anyone more competent, Poland could have found itself at ground zero of a new military struggle for Europe, and the major European powers could have done little if anything to help the nation. Britain has been in decline as a military power for decades now, with its military shrinking to half of its size at the end of the Cold War. As an island nation, Britain's most important capability is its ability to send expeditionary forces abroad. And yet, during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the British military got the nickname the Borrowers for their tendency of bartering for pieces of kit that they were missing. Meanwhile, their navy's been in significant decline, with their ships having to be in effect mothballed so their crews can be used elsewhere. In 2021, Britain's Parliamentary Defense Committee delivered a scathing report outlining significant problems with the Royal Navy, including a critical lack of offensive capability and too few surface ships and submarines. Germany's facing its own significant issues. Main its problems, from a lack of qualified technicians as well as spare parts, has meant that German pilots aren't getting the number of hours in the cockpit they need to remain proficient. The country is also incapable of meeting NATO's rapid response requirements without cannibalizing other units, leaving it in serious risk of being incapable of fighting a protracted conflict. France is about the only European power to maintain a significant military capability. We actually have little to criticize about France, except that its expeditionary capabilities are slightly lacking, but experience gained in counterterrorism operations in Africa is helping to rectify the problem. We're not picking on Europe unfairly, though. The simple fact is the continent has been coasting on the back of the U.S. military for decades. The Royal Navy prioritized retiring logistics vessels as a cost-saving measure. Why? because any conflict they foresaw fighting would involve the United States and its massive logistics capabilities. Germany retired much of its ground-based air defenses. Why? Because any war it would be involved in would have assumed air superiority largely thanks to the United States. Since the Cold War ended, Europe evolved into a power that would complement U.S. warfighting abilities rather than be a battlefield force on its own. Given the fact that Europe's favorite historical pastime was mercilessly slaughtering each other for thousands of years, this might not have been such a bad thing. Poland has seen which way the wind's blowing, and that it cannot rely on its European allies for national defense. The U.S. military is the most powerful in the world, but it's also half a planet away. And if history is anything to go by, and it absolutely is if you're Poland, then by the time the US Army arrives in Europe in force, Poland would already be a battleground. Perhaps no nation in the world is as cursed as Poland, which has historically served as a convenient middle ground for major European armies to batter each other to pieces. That's because the nation has basically no defensive geographical features, allowing invaders to just casually stroll right on in at their leisure. Poland is done being Europe's punching bag and is aiming to field the most capable military inside of Europe. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki spoke to the nation on the eve of its Independence Day, stating the Polish army must be so powerful that it does not have to fight due to its strength alone. 
Judging by the amounts of weapon orders it's been putting in, this is far more fact than wishful thinking. Poland is raising its defensive spending from 2.4% of their GDP to a whopping 5%. This is more than even the United States. It also puts other NATO partners to shame who have largely struggled to meet the bare minimum requirement set by the alliance of 2%. This is a long-term commitment, too, as the country is determined to double the size of its military by 2035, from 150,000 to 300,000. Those troops are going to need combat gear, though, and Poland is buying it in spades. In exchange for sending 240 Soviet-made tanks to Ukraine, the US cut Poland a deal for 250 Abrams, a significant upgrade to its land forces. But the nation was paying very close attention to the fighting in Ukraine, and has made a direct bid to Lockheed Martin to buy around 500 HIMARS units. This was an incredible order, and would have made Poland as big an operator of HIMARS as the United States. Unfortunately, the US was itself procuring units to replace those sent to Ukraine and to make even more available to the country. Given that the war in Ukraine has been basically one giant commercial for Lockheed Martin, it's no surprise that other nations were already in line to buy the vaunted guided rocket artillery, even with the US wishing to beef up its own numbers. With the US in effect sold out for the foreseeable future, Poland turned to South Korea for its guided rocket artillery need, signing an order for 288 Chunmu platforms. Similar to HIMARS, only beefier, the Chunmu can carry twice as many rockets as HIMARS, though at the cost of mobility. With a significant standing army in the works, though, Poland believes the trade-off is worth it. Its rocket artillery will have to do less hiding thanks to major investments in other areas of its military. This includes the Air Force, with Poland signing an agreement to buy 32 F-35s. But Poland shocked the world when it once more returned to South Korea for multiple military purchases, in effect sourcing almost all of its new purchases from the nation. Purchases include a fleet of 48 F-A-50s. These are meant to replace its aging fleet of MiGs and will complement its inventory of F-16s and soon F-35s. While Poland won't have a major air force anytime soon, it's well on its way to being a significant threat to Russia should it ever make the mistake of crossing into its airspace. Beefing up its traditional tube artillery, Poland is also buying 648 K-9 howitzers from South Korea. This will make Poland one of, if not the biggest artillery power in Europe aside from Russia, especially when coupled with its purchase of 288 Chunmu MLRSs. By far the highest profile item on Poland's shopping list, though, and one that has really annoyed its neighbor, is the purchase of nearly 1,000 K-2 main battle tanks. The K-2 was originally designed by South Korea and is believed to be a highly capable modern tank. Its real capabilities are unknown, though. As the tank has never seen combat and the South Korean government isn't in a hurry to make classified data public. Most observers, however, have full confidence in the K-2, though Russian defense analysts are puzzled by the design decision to not have the tank launch its crew into orbit upon taking a hit from an anti-tank missile. The main concern raised by Poland's purchase power, however, is that the K-2 was specifically built for a war South Korea expected to fight on its relatively hilly terrain, a far cry from the flat European plain. How the K-2 will fare here is anyone's guess, and hopefully we'll never have to find out. Poland's South Korea spending spree has made the two countries absolutely chummy, and that's something that's really annoyed the rest of Europe. Home to many great tank manufacturers, Europe is frankly puzzled at Poland's decision to purchase tanks from a nation half a world away, especially when its logistics will depend on easily disrupted supply routes that literally span the planet. But the decision makes a lot of sense if South Korea plans to break into the global arms market, and if the nation builds maintenance facilities inside of Poland itself, this will secure Poland's logistics needs and open the door to the European arms market for South Korea, a deal that benefits both sides. Germany has famously been the United States' most important European ally, but now Germany has become nothing more than a logistics hub for the American military. With the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, Poland has now become America's most important European ally, and the relationship was cemented by US officials commenting on that fact. Perhaps unsurprising given its proximity to Russia, Poland was the loudest voice calling for Europe to aid Ukraine and threw its doors open to Ukrainian refugees. Its airfields and transport networks were immediately made available to the US and other foreign aid flowing into Ukraine. And when a Ukrainian air defense missile landed in Poland and killed several people, the nation put the blame squarely on Russia for necessitating the launch of said missile by Ukraine in the first place. 
Given Poland's history and tenuous strategic position in Europe, it's no surprise that it's incredibly invested in the outcome of the war in Ukraine. What is surprising, however, is the incredible speed with which the country has moved to bolster its defenses and the willingness to work with the United States to arm Ukraine. Given its position inside of Europe and the military capabilities it'll soon field, it's easy to see why Poland will soon trump the rest of the European powers as America's most important ally in the region. What remains to be seen, however, is if the nation will go through with all of its planned purchases, especially if the war in Ukraine ends sooner than expected and the Polish population grows weary of the incredible price tags of some of these weapons. Now go check out NATO World War III plan or click this other video instead.